Part 1 The True Beginning The Union Pacific Big Boy is a 604 ton, 19,000 cubic feet of steel, coal, and water poised upon 36 wheels spaced no wider apart than those on your everyday car. That it could thunder safely over undulating and curved tracks at speeds in excess of 70 miles an hour was due in large measure to the efforts of two long forgotten pioneers. As early as 1836, the basic system that held its wheels in equalized contact with the rails was patented by a Philadelphian named Joseph Harrison. A French technical writer named Anatole Mallet first thought to couple two driving units heel to toe below one boiler in 1874. This is the story and comprehensive breakdown of the Union Pacific Big Boy. Part 2 A Well Built Machine a two-axled guiding truck ensured maximum front instability at high speeds, and while Big Boy was primarily a freight hauler, it could and did maintain exacting passenger train schedules with as many as 30 standard weight Pullman cars in tow. Lateral motion for the trailing truck was provided by a pennant and socket joint at the front. Weight was opposed upon outbird radial bearings at the rear. The forward and rear driving units were connected by a tongue and groove joint. While the former assembly could fan to one side or the other, there was no up and down hinging action. Rather, the two units behaved as one when the locomotive crested a hill or dipped into a sag. The equalizing systems alone responded and the result was excellent stabilization. This diagram represents Big Boy's forward driving equalizing system. The balancing action in both assemblies was extended not only to the trucks but from one side of the unit to the other by means of transverse rocker arms. The big boy's rear driving unit's equalizing system was a train of rocking arms, rods, and springs that reacted to undulations by balancing and cushioning upward and downward axle movements. Lateral play axle bearings or driving boxes applied to the first three pairs of traction wheels on each of the units preventing binding and flange wear while Big Boy navigated curves. Designated a 4-10-0 or centipede type, the 218-ton tender provided non-swiveling mountings for five-wheel and axle assembly. The advantages of this assembly over using a conventional truck was a reduction in the number of moving parts and less dead weight in relation to coal and water capacity. A four-wheeled guiding truck eased the tender through curves. Its pivotal bearing was placed on a cross member, or bolster, which kept it centered above the rails by swinging to the left or right on rockers. The engineering designing used in Big Boy and the second generation of its elder brother, the Challenger, provided unequaled size, power, speed, and flexibility on the rails. They were the epitome of true multifaceted locomotives. Union Pacific's Big Boys were amongst the heaviest reciprocating engines ever built. While atypical of late-era steam power because of their extreme dimensions, the Big Boys provided a good illustration of sheer size and power that the American locomotives had attained. They weighed 772,000 pounds, had a 150.5 square foot firebox grate, operated at 300 psi boiler pressure, and could deliver 135,400 pound tractive effort, almost 20 times that of the typical 440 back in 1855. No locomotive outside the United States could ever approach the magnitude of a big boy. The big boys were perhaps the Union Pacific's most important factor in their ability to handle wartime freight. They could do the work of two lesser design locomotives on one of the toughest hauling jobs on any American railroad. They were as fast as 80 miles an hour but produced maximum power continuously at 70 miles per hour. The following specifications apply to the Union Pacific's big boy locomotives. A total of 25 units was built by the American Locomotive Company. The cylinders were 4 at 23 by 3 quarter inches by 32 inches a total weight of 1,208,750 pounds. They developed 300 pounds of total steam pressure, carried 28 tons of fuel, 25,000 gallons of water. The main drivers were 68 inches. They developed 6,000 drawbar horsepower 
at 45 miles an hour and the railroad class was 4,000. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed the artwork viewed at the beginning of this video, please visit our print shop at nickelplatelimited at etsy.com. Also, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, and turn on all notifications so that you can see all of our updates on future videos. Thank you once again.